Today we have Miss. Today we have Councilwoman Mary Kay Harris that is going to speak to that very issue. Mary Kay Harris, Councilwoman Mary Kay Harris. Thank you so, thank you so much for having me out here today. I represent Ward 11. Before I even re uh, decided to run as a council person, I've always supported, always stood on uh, fighting and advocating for affordable housing. It is a need, it is a basic need, and it is a need of the people. And so it is only right for Rhode Island Housing to do what's right at this time. I just want to share a few notes with you. In November 2016, the voters, you know, as Malcolm has said, approved question seven, which is uh, authorized 50 million in housing opportunities fund to be administrated by Rhode Island Housing. Of the 50 million, 10 million was specially, specially set aside for urban revitalization and blight remediation is being administered through Rhode Island Housing. That's what Ma Malcolm had brought up already. While voters were persuaded, and by the way, I persuaded a lot of members in my community to vote for this bond, they would support they would support the bond on promise that the 10 million would be used to help cities and towns to revitalize vacant and foreclosed homes this pool is now being made available to commercial development that's new for me i'm sorry that's new for me because when i understood the presentation i understood it to be for the millennium for the seniors for the homeless and for people who are struggling low income. Despite being the urban core of Rhode Island and having a disproportion of numbers of the state vacant, blighted, and foreclosed okay. homes, none of the 10 million for urban revitalization and blighted remediation has been allocated to Providence neighborhoods. And I think that's why Dear is here today, and that's why I'm supporting this cause. 100% of the area media income comes to roughly $60,000 uh, income per year, more than triple the per capita income of the average Providence resident. According to the 2015 American... Uh, okay. According to the uh, 2015 American Community Survey. Now... The number of U.S. households that spend more than half of their income on rent has grown roughly 25% since 2007. And I'm going to use this according to some data that my staff have done, analyzed by the Joint Center of Rhode Island Studies of Harvard University. They did a lot of study, and according to the National Low Income Housing Coalition, Rhode Island faces serious affordable housing shortage with only 44 affordable housing shortage, with only 44 housing units for every 100 extremely low income Rhode Islanders, and only 66 affordable housing units for every 100 Rhode Islanders earning 50% in area of median income. So much different than 100%. 120% that we see that Rhode Island Housing have laid out. According to the Housing Work Rhode Island, these are people that's near us as well doing this record. 49% of Rhode Island homeowners and 50% of its renters spend more than 30% of their income on housing and are considered housing costs burden. So with this information that we have learned, um, we're, we're realizing that for some, the burden could be one emergency. It could be a broken car. It could be, it could be someone ill in the family. It could be one day of missed work. And from that, they're, they're, you're, you're, you're being, um, you're being um, at risk of losing your home. So today is very, very important to stand firm and stand strong as united around affordable houses. So I do support the, uh, the concept of us really, really doing really well with the $50 million bond and the $10 million needs to be rolled out right. So I really support that, uh, the, the decision that DARE has made to expose this um, 
a layout rollout that they have done that Malcolm had mentioned. So thank you again for listening to me and hearing my concerns as well. Thank you for being here.